So, uh, yeah, I posted this about two weeks ago uh, in the uh, Gitter, uh, Singapore.js Gitter. Uh, it, it came up because I was working on something, and I was like, I don't need a test framework, I'm just going to have an array of functions and execute them, that's going to be my tests. Uh, and I, then I got to it, I was like, oh, that's actually not as easy as I thought it would be. And then I was like, that this would make a good quiz. Uh, and then I was like, I'll post this on Twitter, but first I'll experiment on Singapore.js attendees. Uh, so I posted it in the Gitter. Uh, a few people had a go at it, and then I posted it on Twitter, and um, there's been a few responses, which has been good. It's been nice. Who's actually tried this? Okay, cool. Who has a solution to it? Okay. That's small. That's good. Um, so for those who... Um, I don't know what I'm about to do. Um, you should probably get your computers out because you're actually going to have a shot at this. Um, so yeah, grab your computers. Uh, we're going to do some coding. Just 10 minutes. You can see, just have a shot at solving solving this problem. Um, I'll make it a bit bigger in a moment. Uh, basically, uh, what you have to do is uh, you've got an array of functions, and you need to pass something to um, Functions, so this is the array. So we've got some array function. Doesn't matter what the functions do. Uh, and then we've got, we're going to pass something to for each something uh, and make all those functions execute. But there's a few conditions to make it more difficult. Uh, you're going to try and do it without using the function keyword. So if you if you've got oh yeah I know how to use for each uh, and and you're like functions dot for each uh, you're going to use function keyword or you're going to use uh, arrow functions to do this no that's not allowed uh, so you've got to do you've got to execute all the functions without using arrows, without using the function keyword, without using the function constructor, and without using um, method <coughs> functions. Don't create any named functions, basically. Go for it. you got 10 minutes. <laughs> um, pair up if you want. <laughs> Serious. Because the this um, the this is different in the browser. Uh, 
economy. So that's a solution, but it's actually it's kind of like a dodgy solution. Who else um, thinks they've got a solution? Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if you can use something not bind. Yeah, you can. That that's that's a good start. Um, how would you do it? Well, I would have to get it from somewhere. Um, I would get it from array dot map dot bind. Okay. And then I would try and oh, see if it works or not. Oh no, sorry. I would bind it to this. this I would bind it to oh, this. Yeah. This, this yeah. So, so there's a few. So the reason why this problem is interesting is because uh, I mean, at least for me, the things that I tried out front didn't work just straight away, uh, and uh, I had to sort of, I had to actually think about it, and it requires really understanding how function invocation and this works in JavaScript, and that's why this is interesting. Uh, I think it's if you can if you can understand this, you've got pretty much all of the hard bits in JavaScript under control. Uh, Dead serious. Uh, so let's let's go through uh, me trying to explain how this works. So. Uh, so we've got array prototype for each. So um, we've got some some object. It's, some, uh, it's an array, and we're calling for each on it. Uh, for each takes a function. If you if you're not aware, uh, takes a function as an argument, um, and uh, for each item in the array, it'll execute that function. Um, how do we execute functions? So if, in this previous example, we're not actually we don't call this function here. Uh, we're not calling that. For each calls that. For each calls that at some point. In, well, for each calls it in, internally. Um, but we're not actually executing that function. We're passing it as an argument. And this is something which we can do because JavaScript has first uh, class functions. Um, a common mistake that beginners make uh, is they think that this is sort of somehow part of the syntax for doing a for each. This is it's not true. We're just creating an anon anonymous function called, well, it's an anonymous function. Uh, <laughs> uh, so we're creating an anonymous function and we're passing it into for each. So this is just a normal function call. Imagine there's another paren there. Uh, and parameter is function. It's, um, this is, that's obvious, obviously anybody who's worked with JavaScript for a while, but it's a major stumbling point for people who are not uh, particularly familiar with um, <coughs> functions as a first class object as a concept, which is not something which you see in a lot of other popular languages. So in order to call a function, so there's defining functions. So this is what we did before. We just did it in line inside the function uh, for each. Um, we can reference functions. And then we can invoke a function. We have to reference it and then use this parens syntax, which you're familiar with. But it's important to understand that there's a difference between, uh, this is something which uh, is different to some language, like for example Ruby, that referencing a function is different to invoking a function. So we can reference and pass this around just like a num the number two, it's, it's, a, very, it's, a, it's a value. Uh, to invoke we do this, and this is actually equivalent, or reasonably equivalent, to calling, taking the function, the reference, uh, and calling call on it and passing the arguments. So every function is an object um, in JavaScript, and functions in JavaScript um, inherit from the function prototype. And the function prototype contains a whole bunch of really nice uh, methods, such as uh, you know apply, bind, call. Um, there's some new ones coming in um, in ES whatever something. Uh, who knows? Uh, it is generated a two source. It also has two strings. So every time you have a, an instance of a function, you can call these methods on on the on that function. <coughs> you, so, but yeah, uh, there's a little mistake there because dot call uh, takes an an extra argument from your argument. So um, so call the first argument to call is actually uh, well, it's not really a mistake. It's just Calling and variable. Oh, that's a mistake. But so the, the first argument to call sets the value of this. But we'll, I'll get to that. Um, I didn't run any of this code, so there's probably more of those. And extra points if you find more mistakes in my code. Um, 
and shows that you're actually reading it, which is nice. Um, so yeah, where did call come from? Yeah, every object is, uh, uh, every function is an instance of function, and they know, oh, I already said that. <coughs> um, so uh, my first instinct to solve this was to pass in the call method, because we've got an array of functions, and well, I want to execute the call on all of those functions, and that seemed like it would be a sensible thing to do. It doesn't work. Uh, it complains, gives you different errors depending on which environment. Uh, but, for example, in Node, it actually gives you a, it sends you down the wrong path, actually. It tells you functions for each is not a function. That's not right. <laughs> <laughs> that's completely incorrect, because that is definitely a function. Uh, this is just some messed up bug in either V8 or Node. I'm not sure where this comes from, but it's, it's pointing at the wrong thing. So that's one problem. If we go into the browser and run that, uh, we get something a little bit more sensible. It says undefined is not a function. But what the hell? What's going on? Because Function of right of call, that's definitely a function. This is a function. What's it talking about? Undefined is not a function. So, two completely uh, not helpful errors, um, weird stuff going on. So, let's try to understand this a little bit better. So, the answer to that question is um, So, the, the problem is um, something to do with this. <coughs> this R. Um, so, Let's do a quick review of this. This is something which is a, um, a, a, a problem for a lot of people um, coming to JavaScript. So we'll do a quick review. Um, whenever you've got uh, an object, you can you can attach functions to objects in JavaScript. Any any object can have things on it, um, and they can be numbers, they can be strings, or they can be functions. If they happen to be a function, that means that you can invoke it, just like any function. But it does a little bit of magic where when you invoke the function, whatever's on the left-hand side of the dot becomes the value of this inside the function. So when you call this function, um, it looks at, looks at the value of this, which is whatever's on the left-hand side of the dot. Um, so that becomes this person object, and then it can access the name parameter, name, name property on that person object. So that's that's like the hardest part of understanding this, I think. Did anybody not follow that? Is that, uh, it's, not, it's embarrassing to put your hand up when I say that. Um, <laughs> I'll assume that you do. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, a neat thing about being uh, about this, to show that, so before we had, a, this is again something which is uh, different about JavaScript than it is in other languages, where the value of this is defined at a runtime when that function is executed. It's not, it actually has nothing to do with how it's defined. So we've defined it inside this person object, and I've also used some fancy new syntax here, but, but I'll just use that in. Um, it's, it's just a speak property, and the speak property happens to be a function shorthand. Um, so yeah, a neat thing about it is that this it doesn't. Uh, what was it? What the hell was I saying? Doesn't matter. Let's move on. <laughs> oh okay. yeah. So uh, it's looked up at runtime. So this is something which is very confusing for people when they're trying to do things. They define it when they, they're looking at they're looking at uh, their persons and they're like, well, the this dot name. For example, this this comes up a lot when you're dealing with something like a uh, an on click handler or a set timeout or something like that. Often the this is just something. Who knows? Uh, it's not what you expect it to be. And the reason why is um, because of this behavior. So yeah, it gets looked up at runtime. So uh, just to demonstrate that, I've created another person here. Uh, given it a property called speed, which is the same as the other one from before. We call it, uh, and it, when it looks up what the value on the left-hand side of the dot, it's this thing. And so when it uh, invokes the thing, this then resolves to this new object, and then it says my name is Jane. So you can think of it like value of this dot some function, so whatever's on the left hand side. So 
So I have another quiz, quiz and a quiz. Uh, so A dot B, what's the value of this inside B? The shadow. Value. Okay. What's the value of this inside C? Yes, correct. And what's the value of this inside A? Good question. Okay. It depends. That's exactly right. Um, so notice that here it doesn't. It actually doesn't care at all about A in this in this instance. Uh, it only looks at what's on the left hand side of the dot where you call the function. This could be anything. Well, as far as as far as C is concerned, this is just a reference to some function. So that's just something which trips people up. So here's a good question. If we're so based on what we just learned, what's the value of this inside four? Yeah, I gave you no information about that. Uh, you can't actually tell because we're not executing call. Functions not for uh, but for each executes call. So we've got no idea what the hell's going on, and so we we're, we're not in control of the, this. Uh, and, uh, and as far as I'm aware, it's like undefined or window depending on the environment that you're running it in. So call and this. So based on what we just did, ABC then. What's the value of this inside call? Yeah, speed. So, what does this tell us about call? Oh, the answer is that. Um, so, call executes whatever function is at its this value when it's invoked. So, back here, when we call call, when uh, call executes, it looks up whatever its value of this is, which just happens to be speed, and then that's the code that it will run. So we can use fancy things in order to uh, tell call, um, give it a different value of this, and it will execute a different function. Oh, sorry. So here, again, oh, this is, this is same trick question. We don't know. So, oh god! I, was, I just scrolled and it went mad. mad. Um, controlling this. So, so this is automatically set to what is on the left hand side of the dot. I'm repeating this because it's just something which is very hard to get through to people. Um, so, but we do have control over how how we set this using some other built-in methods, um, such as. But they were on the bottom of that slide, which didn't come up, but that's okay. Such as call. And this is what uh, Olmey mentioned before, um, that uh, call, the first value to call sets the this out in the function, not in call. It doesn't matter about call, because the thing on the left is this function. But we can set the this arg for this function by passing it as the first argument to call. Make sense? So when function executes, let's just say this was that speak thing, we could we could set function to be um, the first person, or we could we could set um, we can set the side to the second person. Um, call allows us to do this, but we can only do it. Um, call invokes the function immediately. So it's not much that we can really do with call because um, back to the original problem, we're talking about for each. And for each needs us to pass a function instance. So a neat thing that we can do, and another one of the pro function prototype methods, is uh, function prototype prototype.bind, which is very similar to call in the way that uh, the arguments work, but instead of invoking the function immediately, it returns a new function, a completely different function that just happens to have the, uh, the this arg set. So this was the example from before. So again, same problem. If you if you rip off the the function from person to speak uh, and then invoke it, uh, it'll just be undefined or window or whatever. You've got no control over the, this arc because there's nothing on the left hand side of the dot. There was, but there's not when you called it. Over here, we can use bind to permanently fix the value of this arc. Um, which allows us to strip it off the original object and invoke it on time. So, um, 
another yeah, interesting part about uh, bind is that once a function is bound, um, the, the this arg can't be changed at all. You can never change it again. Um, in this case, we tried to set it to the other person, um, but it was originally bound on the previous slide to the first person, and so when it invokes, it completely ignores that um, first argument to call. Um, and so you can't set it again. So now we actually have everything that we need to solve the original problem. Call executes whatever is set to the this value. We want to pass the function to for each, uh, and that function needs to take the function as an argument and then execute it. Uh, and bind allows us to fix the value of, of this to something. So based on that, I'm not going to give you the solution. <laughs> uh, uh, I've given you everything that you need to know to solve it, I think. Um, so please go, go away and have a shot at that, that problem. Um, and in the meantime, I'll give you some other solutions. So uh, there's an ES6 solution, which is actually way simpler than everything that I just described. Uh, you just pass in reflect or apply to that's supposed to be functions for each, whatever. Function dot for each, reflect or apply, uh, and this will actually work. But Reflex an ES6 API, so uh, it's not available in all environments. It's actually, but that, I didn't know about this, I didn't think about this when I first posted this thing, and then somebody came in like showed me up, and I was like, oh, excellent, great. So that's cool, uh, food goes in mouth. <laughs> it works in a browser. What's that? It works in a browser. It works in a browser? Oh, it worked in Chrome, uh, but how far back, who knows. Um, uh, solution that you can use if you want to use JavaScript features which don't actually exist yet. Um, it might exist, but it's stage zero, so it might not. Um, and this is a weird solution. I actually have to sit down and think about how the this works. <laughs> <laughs> this is really strange. Um, it turns out it won't work unless you, if you have to pass a truthy value here. <laughs> uh, but the way it actually works is that it uses uh, it, it gets, it has for this for each execute the function for you, but it just executes one. It's weird. Uh, somebody came up with that. Uh, is, it, is that person in this room? No. Okay. It's weird. <laughs> uh, and there's a bunch of people who cheated. Uh, like this one, it, it actually creates a new function, uh, and they supply the body of the function here as a string. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I said you can't use the function keyword, so they use um, methods, uh, the, the method syntax to create an object with a key value, which happens to be a function, and they extract the key value. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a solution either. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, there's lots lot, lot of interesting things with this, just this simple problem makes you think a lot. Um, I thought that was interesting. And uh, since, I've, since I've posted it, I've got like a bunch of like, I don't know, interesting reactions from people. Uh, I'm not going to restart this. Let's start. Let's
Um, so this guy thought I was killing him. This guy said it's the best worst. This guy is a um, uh, an ex Facebook guy, uh, and uh, yeah, he, he he ended up with this super confused like thousand thing long thing. It was very confusing. Uh, but yeah, even even people who are like supposed to know what they're doing um, have gotten like tripped up by this. I got tripped up. By, um, Jake Brownwater, he's one. He's he works at New Relic, uh, and he called me a monster. <laughs> Uh, and uh, Ragnarok, he, he wrote like um, JavaScript for Stretch, I don't know, PocketScript for Stretch, one of those. Uh, but he wrote both. But uh, he's, he's a, he used to work with GitHub, and he thinks it's his new favorite interview question. So, um, <laughs> and that's good. Uh, you know, just this one little problem that got lots of interesting um, responses. So, that's my talk. Thanks.